Positive attitudes were determined to increase productivity and are now therefore mandatory. I have to write code that will take each number and put it into the outbox, but if the number is negative, I must first remove its negative sign. So I always start by picking up a number. And if the number is negative, I gotta do some weird thing. And I think I would copy it to the floor. And then if I subtract it from itself, I should get zero. And if I do that again, I would then get the positive version of the original number. So I could then put it in the out box and jump back to the beginning to repeat. But what if the number isn't negative? Well, then I could just put it into the out box and jump to the beginning. And let's see if this works. Our guy picks up the four, sees that it's positive, puts it into the out box. Picks up negative one, sees that it's negative, subtracts it from itself twice and becomes a positive one. Therefore working and every number should work in the same way. Lo and behold, a correct output. However, I'm too big. I need to decrease my size by one command. Well, if I move my code to the beginning, maybe I'd be able to do something a little better. I can get rid of a jump and I could get rid of an outbox because the negative could go all the way back to the beginning and the non-negative could just go to the outbox. But Tyler, won't this code execute it right at the beginning if I start it? It will, and that's why I sh should have this jump command to skip it at the very beginning. Now I've got eight lines, and it should work exactly the same. Just shifting around physically helps save a line and should get me to my goals. It also sped things up. I love being better than average. Let's check out the exclusive lounge, possibly a bonus challenging challenge. I must examine each pair of numbers in the inbox. And if they're both positive or if they're both negative, I send a zero to the outbox. Or if one is positive and one is negative, then I send one to the outbox. This definitely seems tricky. I should start by picking up the first number and putting it on zero. And then picking up the second number. Hmm. I actually already don't want to put it on the floor. I'll just have two cases, a positive case and a negative case. If the first number is negative, then I could check to see if the second number is negative by picking it up and checking if it's negative. If so, I'd copy from here, I'd pick up the zero and shove it in the outbox and then jump back to the beginning. The more I think about it, the more of a terrible of an idea this is, but I'm going to keep doing it anyways. If the first number is negative, but the second number is not negative, then I would have a jump statement in here, which would take it to a copy from five, which picks up the one, puts in the out box, and then goes back to the beginning. This is a terrible idea. If the first number is positive, I can then check if the second number is positive. If it's negative, then that have different signs. I should go copy from five. And if the second number is positive, then they both have the same sign, so I should copy from four. This works. This is not good, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So he's doing all that mental math. Four, negative eight have different signs. Good. Two and negative four have different signs. That's a one. Negative one and four have different signs. That's a one. This is bad code. Yep. It is close though. I mostly need to optimize size. Well, I believe again, it would be beneficial to move this stuff to the front. So this is if both signs are equal, which should have the arrows point to it. Don't mess that up. And then I don't need this jump anymore. However, if I bring the option to copy from five to the front, I believe I will need to keep the jump. Oh, I know. Let me first move these arrows up. I could simply get rid of this outbox and jump to the other outbox. But now I just need to have the initial jump over this code, leaving me at 13 lines when I think I need 12. Well, hold on. If this already needs a jump to get to the outbox, does this really need to be at the beginning? Because if this goes to the end, it could still go to the outbox, but then these first two arrows would need to redirect to it. And if I bring this arrow back, Having an arrow that just goes to the next part is unnecessary, so I could get rid of it. Thus, 12 lines. This is basically the start of the code, and then I'll check the first number, and then there's two major sections here. The first number positive section, and the first number negative section. And then it checks the second number, and depending on whether it's positive or negative, I pick up four or five. Let's see if it works. So in the beginning, I pick up the two, I do some mental math, I find that they're different symbols, and then it goes back to the beginning. Oh my gosh, I think it works. Yeah, this one was tricky. I 
don't blame you if you don't understand it, but it's done. It's satisfying to see the character go. How about a nice coffee break at the sabbatical beach paradise? Nice, I finally saved up enough money to go on vacation. Back to the work. Yes, welcome back. I love what you've done with your hair. I know, right? It's so blue and balding. So I have to make a program that takes each number in the inbox and then outputs a countdown starting at that number or a count up. So if I have four, I would count down four, three, two, one, zero, put then the output in that order. And for negative nine, I would count negative nine, negative eight, up, up, up to zero. I have new commands that can bump a number up or down by one. So I pick up the number and if it's negative, I would first copy it to the floor, then increase the number by one. Wait, does that increase the number on the floor or the one that I'm holding? Oh, it does both. That's convenient. So clearly, actually, before I bump it, I should outbox the number to start the countdown, then increase it by one. Then check to see if it's zero, because if it's zero, the countdown is done, and it would go back to the beginning. But if it's zero, it still has to print one more time. So I'll leave the outbox here. But if it's not zero, then I should rinse and repeat. Print the number, increase by one, check if zero. Print the number, increase by one, check if zero. I'm also gonna have copy to zero be right after inbox because I want that to happen even if the number is positive. And actually I can also check if the number is zero right away and then put in the outbox. And if it's zero, I don't even need to copy it down, saving me some time. But if it's not zero and if it's not negative, then it's positive. So I would first print the positive number, subtract it, then check if zero, and then repeat those three steps. Looks like it should work, but I have a feeling it's one number high. Oh, I forgot to skip over the early code, of course. First thing I do is skip over outbox. There we go. So two becomes two, one, zero. Negative six becomes negative six, negative five, negative four, number three, number two, number one, zero. Zero becomes zero, and three is three, two, one, zero. So it works. Is it proper? Huge in speed, terrible in size. What can I say? I like it big and fast. I want to open a different tab. At least lets me save my work, but make brand new code. I could pick up the number. I could copy it to the floor. If it's zero, put it in the outbox. I feel like this should be the outbox right at the beginning, so I'm gonna have to jump over that. If it's not zero, I should print the number in the outbox. And then if the number is negative, I should increase it by one. And if it's not negative, I should decrease it by one. But then both need to be outboxed. And I have only one line left. What the hell? Like, I could get them both to jump back to this point where it checks if there's zero, which should work with 11 lines, hopefully. Son of a. Right, I can't outbox and then check to see what number I'm holding because I wouldn't be ha holding any number. So I would need to copy from zero. So this is a little shorter and should work, but still not short enough. So that's very slow and only slightly shorter. Good God, that's slow. Well, I can save a line by getting rid of this outbox, moving jump if zero after the copy back to the beginning, and then I have nothing to jump over. This is 10 lines and should probably work. Yeah, because this still counts down fine. I just check when it's zero at a different time. So let me make sure it prints zero and then yeah. And then it moves on to the next number. So I have a feeling I'm gonna need two separate things of code. One that's optimized for speed and one that's optimized for time. Well, I got the speed already done. So this is the one for size. So I did both challenges, right? I did, cause both the lights are on. I wonder if I can do both challenges with a single execution of code. That was really tough. How was multiplication workshop? And now I gotta take a code where I grab a pair of numbers and then multiply them and outbox the result. I think I know where I'd start by getting rid of this stuff. So first inbox, I copy the number to the floor. So if I wanna multiply six by five, that's the same thing as doing six plus six plus six plus six plus six, which is five sixes, hence the five, and it's also four plus signs. So what I would want to do after picking up the six and copying is picking up the five, copying it to eight, so it can just be my counter, and then subtracting it by one to get the number of plus signs. Now, what if the second number was zero? Then after subtracting one, it would actually be negative one. So I could do a jump if negative to a spot where I pick up the zero from the floor and output that. And then I outbox it. 
And I feel like this is gonna have to go in the front. Just a hunch. And I'm gonna have to jump over those. But I feel like this doesn't actually need to be so complicated. Actually, we can save time in a different way. I could actually have a jump if zero right after I pick up either of the two numbers. Because if either of the two numbers are zero, when I multiply them together, the output will be zero. So now this section assumes that the second number and the first number aren't zero. So after I subtract the second number to get the number of plus signs needed, I will then pick up the first number, add it to itself, and place it in the first tile. Now I actually want to make a loop, so I'm going to do something weird. I'm actually gonna copy the very first number in the beginning to both the zeroth and the first tile so that when I actually pick it up again, I can pick it up from the first tile. Why does this matter? Because it can allow me to do a loop here, but I did forget a step in the loop. I forgot a way to exit the loop because all this will do is endlessly add a number. As you can see, it's adding and adding and adding and adding and adding without a stop. Once this number becomes zero, I need to stop adding. So after I subtract the counting number, if it's zero, I could then copy from one and then outbox that. However, if I want to save space, I think I'll have to bring this to the front. So I jump up here and then it'll already outbox. And then if I copy from zero, I'll have to jump over the copy from one. It's 18 lines, but it might work. It picks up three, puts it on the ground twice. Picks up four. There's three plus signs remaining, so I add three with three to get six. Make, drop that three to two, two plus signs left. I add six and three, I get nine. Decrease the two, and there's one plus sign left. Three plus nine is 12. And now there's zero plus signs, it'll pick up the 12, put in the output. Hallelujah. And does it work well if it's zero? Yeah, it just quickly spits out zero. Oh! Why did that output nine? Oh, it's because zero was the first number. So if I pick up the first number is zero, I will actually need to just pick up the second number and then copy from zero. So that's just adding an extra line and it should work now. So four and zero give me zero. If zero is the first number, I got rid of the two and now it should work. Uh, this is, there's no way this is efficient. Nope, they both suck. Speed is okay, though. I'll try to get speed first. Just need four steps fewer. Well, if I want to have good speed, I should be having as few plus signs as possible. So maybe I should compare the two numbers, figure out which one is the smaller number, and then use that to determine how many plus signs there should be. For example, with two and five, the way I would have it right now is I would do two plus two plus two plus two plus two, when it could just be five plus five. So if I do this thing where I take the second number and copy it twice to seven and eight, so I'll be holding the second number and then subtract the first number from it. If the outcome is negative, then the numbers are set up in the correct spot with the small number being at eight and the big number being at zero. But if that's not the case, then I should swap the numbers. And that would look like taking the number from zero, placing it on eight, and then taking the number from seven, which is why I had two copies of the second number, and placing that on both zero and one, making a giant m mess of code, but it's really just adding a single instruction, which is just swapping the numbers. So five and two is positive, so I gotta swap the numbers. And now they're in the proper spot, so I add those together, and look, I have 10. The addition works, now is it time efficient? I mean, I swapped seven and one. That has to be faster, right? Hey, speed challenge is perfect. Now let's go fix that size challenge. I think I need new code. 15 lines sounds tough. I'll pick up the first number, put it on zero. Now I won't have any weird edge cases if either of the numbers are zero. I think I'll just have it multiply and let it take its time. I think I still have to copy this to one regardless and pick up the second number, copy it to eight. Now bump it down one. I can still check this, see if the second number is zero and then immediately outbox it. And of course, jump over this early section because then I got to check my counter. I would have to decrease the bump to negative eight. If the bump is now zero, I would jump to the front, copy from zero and then outbox that. Then if it's not zero, I would copy from one, add it to zero, place it back on one, rinse and repeat. And that's 15 lines. 
Does it work? Very slowly, but I believe so. How about them edge cases? Yeah, it's just adding zeros over and over again, but hey, it's space efficient. Two separate challenges complete. Again, it does not sound possible if it's just one block of code, but I could be wrong. Another puzzle complete. Well, this game got hard fast. The single hardest part for me is figuring out how to explain this easily. So hopefully I've been doing an okay job. So thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see more. See you on the next episode. Have a wonderful day and peace.